dynamic scoring. Now, I, I realize, you know, I've mentioned this a couple times in the last couple hours. It's not the best tease, right? I mean, if you want to get people to continue to listen to your program, you say you say things like, up next, should kittens be run over or something? You know, it's, it's something that's provocative or cute or whatever. But dynamic scoring, people are going, what? What's that? I don't know. I don't care. Well, you better care. Dynamic scoring is something that they came up with during the Re- the Reagan administration because the Republicans had a problem. They wanted to cut taxes on rich people and at the same time their rhetoric was that they wanted to reduce the national budget deficit. All right, so less debt but less taxes. Now, if you do the math, and it's a fairly straightforward process, if you reduce taxes on rich people, then the consequence of that is that you get less money. (laughs) It's very, very simple, right? It's pretty straightforward. And uh, country after country, government after government, you know, have demonstrated this for years and years and years. Cut taxes, you cut government revenues. Art Laffer, though, had come along with this thing. He called it the Laffer Curve, which is laughable, which suggested that if you cut taxes on rich people, they will take that money that they would have otherwise paid in taxes and invest it into the economy. Now, history shows that that's not actually what happens. What happens is rich people take that money and they buy a new mansion. Well, I guess that's an investment in the economy of of some sort, or buy a yacht, or more likely, they put it into the stock market or they put it into a Swiss bank. And it drives up the stock market, uh, it helps out the Swiss banks, but hey. So, but the net effect of cutting taxes on rich people is you cut government revenue. But they couldn't come out and say that, because if you cut government revenue without cutting spending, you're going to increase the debt or the deficit. And you're going to increase both, actually. So they came up with this thing that was this is part of of, they they never called it trickle down economics. They called it supply side economics. And in order to sell supply side economics to the American people, they they had the CBO. They they made sure that the Congressional Budget Office was run by Republicans, majority Republicans. And they invented this new phrase called dynamic scoring. And what it means is we're going to cut taxes on rich people to a tune of, say, you know, we're going to reduce government income by a trillion dollars a year. But because we're cutting taxes on rich people, that's going to increase the economy. So we shouldn't view this as a drop in government revenues of a trillion dollars, we should actually view it as a drop in government revenues of zero. In fact, it'll actually increase government revenues. So instead of saying we're going to cut taxes and thus cut government income, we you, you say we are going to cut taxes and it's going to magically increase government income. Now, dynamic scoring was used for a couple of years back during the Reagan administration to sell Reaganomics, to sell supply-side economics, trickle-down economics, and it didn't work. Ronald Reagan's, you know, they they dropped the top tax rate from 74% down to 28%, and it tripled the national debt. Tripled. Ronald Reagan saw the biggest increase in the national debt outside of wartime of any president in the history of the United States with with his dynamic scoring. So it was totally discredited. And pretty much the only people around who still remember the phrase dynamic scoring are people who remember the 80s. And Paul Ryan, who wants to bring it back. I share with you, this is from a uh, blog by R. Muse over at uh, politicususa.com. P-O-L-I-T-I-C-U-S-U-S-A.com. It's a great progressive blog. And it is titled, Republicans Plan Another Bush Trickle-Down Assault in 2015. Now, George Bush tried to sell this during his presidency, by the way. So it's not altogether archaic. But he writes, 
As Republicans prepare to take control of Congress in a couple of weeks after eliminating women's reproductive rights, blocking the president's executive action on immigration enforcement and thwarting normalized relations with Cuba, they plan to revert to Bush era trickle down tax policy. In fact, very high atop the GOP's agenda is reforming what they call the, quote, highly unpopular federal tax code, end quote, to better serve the rich and corporation and express their 30 year love affair and devotion to trickle down economics. Paul Ryan, he says, it is noteworthy that Paul Ryan intends on reinstituting an exclusively Republican CBO, Congressional Budget Office, to approve the Republican trickle-down tax scheme as an economic boon to fool Americans into thinking that after 30 years, trickle-down will finally work this time. The Republicans' favorite scheme is cutting taxes for the rich and simplifying the tax code for everyone else by expanding the tax base. Translation, raise taxes on lower-income Americans. You recall Ronald Reagan started taxing Social Security recipients. Remember that? Oh, you got to be an old fart to remember that, but uh, you look it up. Um, now, it wasn't, uh, in all fairness, it wasn't just Reagan, Daniel Patrick Moynihan, and Alan Greenspan you know, had a hand in that. But raise taxes on lower income Americans, including those living in poverty and elderly Americans living off their meager Social Security retirement income. Republicans have also floated eliminating popular deductions for middle class taxpayers, thus raising their tax liability to fund corporate and rich Americans tax cuts. Now, in this blog, he doesn't use the word dynamic scoring, but I can tell you I'm predicting. This is my my prediction for 2015. Is that within one month of this day. Everybody in America will have heard the phrase dynamic scoring several times. Now, I might be wrong. We'll see. But I don't think I'm wrong. 